So, and, and I'm Andrew Rist. I've, I basically have been involved in open office mostly uh, uh, through my employment at Oracle. I was, I was the one who got tasked with bringing open office to uh, Apache, at least from the Oracle side. So, um, I was just going to, you know, go through this, kind of look at what, what the problem is, uh, do this whirlwind tour of all the things that, that we had to bring across, talk about some lessons learned, and then we can discuss at the end. So, I don't know that I have to go uh, too deeply into this. Um, open Office, you know, written originally back in the 80s, was uh, Star Office and then bought by Sun, open sourced as openoffice.org, and then eventually bought by Oracle. And then at Oracle, it was then transitioned over to Apache and has now become Apache Open Office. Um, it's different than a lot of Apache projects in that it's a consumer product. And the, the, the best way of showing that is since we've been at Apache, we're, we're now 100 million downloads of the software. And so what is that, Rob, about a two-year two -year window? It's, um, it's really quite extraordinary. And then the, the, um, the, web, the web page has taken you know, 220 million page views in the last year. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty massive, it has a pretty massive community. Um, you know, something like 11 million lines of code, and we have this you know, massively diverse community with not only coders, but translators. We have marketing people. We have you know, people doing QA. Uh, it's it's this just very, very wide project. And it's actually it's a very small portion of, of the people in the project that are actually coding on the underlying code. And it's a really, really large group that's then doing support and all of these other these other functions. So, you know, when I thought about, okay, well, you know, what do we have to do to transition open office from a, a project that, that, that's, you know, dominated by a single vendor, and we're going to transition it over to Apache. So it's pretty simple, right? You, you, you take the code, you transition that over, hand over some domain names, uh, transfer the uh, bug database, you know, move, move the website across, and you're done. It's, it's pretty simple. Okay, that's the presentation and discuss. Okay, wait, wait, let's, let's slow down here. It turns out it was more complex than that. Um, and, you know, one of the, the first things I know I had to deal with was all the legal issues around. So we have relicensing of the code, we have the licensing of of all the other artifacts, the things on the, uh, the website, the things in the forum, stuff in the wiki. There's the actual transferring of the assets and how do you do that. And it's, it, I, I find that to be very interesting because you have an entirely different uh, view of the world, whether you're coming from you know, a kind of small startup or, or you know, individual um, situation where, where you're just kind of involved in open source and it's like, oh, our stuff's on GitHub, you know, it, it's share, everybody can share with this. When you look at it from the other side and you're dealing with large corporations, all of a sudden they start to, you know, think about provenance. They start to think about, you know, are we going to get sued? And so there's, there's a much, much higher level of interest in the legal aspects of things, um, and especially dealing with something as large as open office. So legal aspects was a, was a big thing. The infrastructure was also, you know, like, it, it's, it's, it's an enormous project. You know, not only is there the website and all the downloads, but there's, you know, forums, wikis, uh, translation artifacts. It, it's, it's just a, you know, and then there, there, were, there were servers set up that, that as we moved across, it's like, oh, and here's, here's another box in the data center. What's this thing doing? And it's like, oh, here's an update server. And we have an old version back, you know, what was it, two? Two, five or something that was hitting this one server and, and just obliterating that one server with these even daily you know questions hey do I need to update and so the the infrastructure was it, it was a lot of moving parts and then finally um, 
the the transitioning of the community is something I think that was that was really important, and it's, it's probably something that we're still, you know, is still ongoing, you know, several years later. Okay, so so now going through the the pieces one by one, um, the code transfer. So the initial piece fairly simple. We grab the code out of Mercurial, put it into SVN. I guess now the, the new thing watching now that SVN switched to Git, I think Git's the uh, Apache joke, you got it. <laughs> you missed that, Jan. I said, I said you know, you, we, we should move to Git now because that's, that's the standard now that SVN's moved to Git. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is true, yes, yes, yes. Um, but then, it's, it's more than just taking this one, one piece and moving it across. It turns out there are all sorts of, um, you know, there are branches and, and, and working sets. And, you know, what have we transferred? Did we just transfer uh, the rights to Apache for the code as it stood at 3.4? 3, 3, or did we transfer everything before that? And did we transfer... All, all of the work in progress that hadn't been pushed in, into the core um, core source. So there, there, suddenly there were already these these you know legal questions around you know what are we transferring to Apache and what what does Apache own? Um, and then also there were you know multiple code repositories. There was there was the the main branch, but then we had other repositories that had older versions that were done on different. Uh, uh, different source control. Once we did move it to Apache, then it became this fun project of transitioning to the Apache license. And uh, fairly straightforward on all the code that was, uh, that was from the project and the, it was a consolidated copyright. So, you know, that, that was fairly straightforward. If it was copyright, open office, you know, it had been Sun, it was Oracle, that was easy to relicense, but then we had all these other pieces that were pulled from somewhere else. And a lot of that, it's like, what, is, this, is this ALV2 compatible? And there were things that we had to tear out, and there were, you know, so this was a long, long process. Um, but, and, and then at, at the bottom, there's this switch from Merc Mercurial to SVN, which was also a, uh, I know for a lot of the developers, was a, a, a little bit of a uh, interesting move as they were used to, uh, you know, it, it, everyone I seems to, seems to get an emotional uh, uh, connection to their source control. So that, that move in itself is also difficult. So, but this is just moving the code of the project across. And, you know, it was long and laborious, but it was actually one of the more straightforward pieces that we had. I, I'm, I'm actually happy to take, take questions as we go. I had available to me some of those scans that had previously been done. Uh, in general, it was pretty straightforward. You know, a, a vast majority of the code was um, consolidated under a, um, a, a, a contributor agreements. So, so we had a consolidated copyright on the code, and what wasn't under that was in the, in the code was fairly easy to find because it had a different header. And so, the the actual changing of all the files had to do with a Perl script that went through and found all of the files that had the correct header or some variation of it. And those were very fairly easy. And then the, the real kind of like work in it w came to going back and then finding the other files and determining exactly what they were, why they had a, a different header, and then how to, how to deal with them one by one. And it was, yeah, and, and well, yeah. Although you know, effectively due do the due the actual acquisition of Sun, the code had had a, a review, which is what.
Right. Right, and so so yeah, we had and we, and we had kind of two sets of files. There there were one set of files that were mostly you know BSD and MIT type license, and th those were fairly easy to move across. And then and here I have this remove incompatibly licensed code. We had other stuff that was you know for the most part L, uh, LGPL or GPL, and that couldn't just come across, and we couldn't keep it as a a hard dependency, although it could be an op optionally, um, uh, optionally yeah, uh, linked in. Um, yeah, I, I guess the most interesting uh, uh, piece in that was the SVG, where we had to get rid of the old implementation for SVG. And who did, who did the implementation, implementation down there? Do you remember? Armin. Was it Ar yeah, Armin w went through and implemented a new Apache compatible SVG package, but the new SVG package had, you know, considerably better feature set than the previous one, and so it was, you know, it's, it's an activity that you wouldn't have done had you not had to move across to the Apache license, but once we did it, we ended up with a much better implementation and a larger feature set. So, there, you know, there, there were some, you know, there were some things we lost, but there were also, you know, some gains. So, um, but, and so, so here we are. You know, we're, we're one piece in so far, and this is just moving the code across. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. That, 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 that was, um, although by the time we did our first release, that was the, the majority of the work was this relicensing. And, and in that, I thought it was fairly interesting there was one set of people who were saying, you know, pretty much all they've done here is relicense the code. And I, I look back at it and say, we relicensed the code. We now went from a copy left to a permissive license. And that was actually a major, major sea change. And I, I don't even know, you know, even in the project, how, how, how much, if we understood how, how important that change was. And, and, I, and I don't think we've really realized the, that change as a product where, you know, we still don't have the amount of um, pieces uh, implemented downstream from us and the uptake of, of the product as an Apache licensed product versus as a, a GPL product yet. But I think that's something that, that could be very, you know, could, could be more interesting than it is now. Although we do have the, the one, um, yeah, the Android port and, the, and the, 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 uh, the ports to tablets that are starting to crop up where people are taking advantage of the Apache license, and it's, it's very interesting. So moving on to the, the, the next piece, uh, we have the, the bugs. This, this was the, the easiest thing to move across. It was, it was an export-import of, of the Bugzilla database. The Apache infrastructure uses Bugzilla, and you know, we just we pulled it out, stuck it in the other side, it came up, um, and yeah, <laughs> and then Rob went in and <laughs> got rid of all of the all of the uh, all of the bugs that were targeted at at, at uh, Oracle developers who were no longer with the project. Yeah, yeah. This is true, huh. and, and and bug number one, right? So, um, you know, and then move across the website. So uh, another piece where this was, it was substantial work, but reasonably straightforward. Th this piece was um, heavily, I guess, uh, Dave Fisher, although did you, did you have, you know, we, we moved a lot of stuff across, and it was basically scrape the website, stuff it into to content CMS, which was also a, you know, Apache standard infrastructure, and then, you know, adjust the templates so that we presented correctly through that and were organized there. It was a substantial amount of work, but in some manner it was fairly rote because, you know, you had a, a, a starting fit, um, situation, you, you had a target and you, you just needed to get the content across. And to a large degree, that was the main uh, push. Um, there was, but 
that piece also, it's, a, it's another part where this is a, um, the, that, that transition, while it was, it had, there was a lot of work to be done, turned out to be only a small portion of it because then suddenly you look around and the website had all these subdomains, update services, and all, all of these pieces that then had to be transitioned over to Apache. Um, we also had a slew of domains. Yeah. Yeah. There, it was. Yeah, and the, yeah, that was uh, the uh, sun. The uh, um, the network is the computer. You know, the the company, the, the good portion of the internet ran on at that point in time. Didn't even host Open Office themselves. They had it at Collabra, which is a fairly interesting game, and we. It, it, under Oracle, it moved over to the, the Kenai infrastructure, which is the, the Sun hosting infrastructure, and then right as that was happening, then it gets transitioned, and, and the, the transition to CMS was um, that kind of next step. But uh, um, there was also, I guess, there, there was quite a bit of organization of the pieces, but to a large degree, most of the content made it across. Um, and then, yeah, that, that one really big uh, piece was moving the download infrastructure over to SourceForge. And I think that's been a, a, an enormous success. Uh, infra infrastructure at Apache, I, I kind of gagged when they figured out just how much storage space you needed to host a single um, open office uh, version. Because once, once you, do, you host the binaries, it's not just this 160 meg file, it's you know, 20, 30 of them because you have, we have a different download package for each language. And the question is whether you're going to be customer focused or uh, internally focused. If you're internally focused, you make a package and you go, oh, hey, we'll just make a package with all the languages in it. It's 300 meg. It's fairly easy. You just keep one for each, uh, each, each version of the, the um, uh, each version of open office. And that way you don't need to have that much, uh, uh, you know, you don't have, have to have these large download uh, directories. But if you look at the, at the end users, a lot of them are downloading over reasonably slow connections. They want to have the smallest download possible. And so if you're looking at it from their standpoint, then you want to make a download for each language. And so it's, it's this duplication of, of the download bits, but it's you know, customer focused. And uh, Infra, yeah, just gagged on that when they were looking at not only how much they'd have to have, but also the, um, the, the size. Um, I did the, you know, the, 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 the quick back of the napkin calculation, right? 100 million downloads times, a, um, times 160 meg. And I was, I was kind of bummed. I was hoping that it was going to be like a petabyte, but it's, it's, it's only in the upper hundreds of um, terabytes that's been uh, downloaded. But still, it's pretty impressive thinking about the percentage of those, and it's probably 30 or 40% that were downloaded over uh, you know, 256K uh, connections. So... Um, but yeah, so SourceForge stepped up and offered to, to host all the downloads and we then uh, have been um, uh, partnering with them and, um, and uh, Roberto has been just fantastic uh, integrating and that's been a, a huge success. So now we're in, so we've moved the code and the website. So that should be, you know, just about done. Well, okay. We also had these forums and wiki. And I know for me, this is, uh, Jan's back there laughing. Uh, this is actually one of the, the more interesting ones as I was dealing with it from the Oracle side because um, I was asking about them and so I was asking the, the, the open office team in Hamburg about the, the forums. And so the, the question was, uh, and, and who, who, who administers this? So where, where is it? And they said, well, there, there's, there are a couple of boxes in there. They're in our DMZ. And uh, there are people who administer them. I'm, so I asked, who? And they're like, well, we have the Terry E. We, we, we have a, uh, uh, his username. And it's like, well, where is he? And it's like, he's somewhere in the world. And he administers the box. And he has all his tools. And both the, the form and the wiki are administered by this guy. And I had to go out and track him down. And he's a guy from England. And he, he did it. But 
it seemed that there were these two boxes sitting in our DMZ that were just administered by the community. There's a whole group of people who, who dealt with the forums and um, you know, they, all, they, they all worked under pseudonyms because I guess if you're uh, involved in the whole idea of free support that you don't want people knowing who you are because eventually someone gets upset with support and attempts to track you down. So they, they, all, uh, they all were uh, yeah, studiously uh, keeping their, their uh, pseudonyms uh, um, between the, uh, the world and, and their actual identities. So we ended up with these boxes that were um, that, that just were administered by the community and, and sitting in a, in, a, um, in a DMZ in a, in a, uh, a server room in, in Germany. So uh, the, the form and the wiki were, 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 were sitting in, uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of that was Oregon State. So, uh, you know, once, once we found it out, we, you know, and then uh, moving them to Apache, the other problem with moving them to Apache was with the forums, there was nothing in, in uh, Apache infrastructure like a forum. And so this was Greenfield. And as for the wiki, we used MediaWiki, and it was, um, there was a, a fairly strong opinion from a lot of people that we had to have MediaWiki and we couldn't switch over to a different uh, style of wiki. So we ended up having to move these services into infrastructure. And the agreement that was originally made was that we would then uh, administer them ourselves. And we would, we would supply uh, resources to administer these boxes ourselves. Um, and uh, I guess there's a, a question as to how much we've um, lived up to our, our portion of the, uh, the bargain on that. Um, on, ongoing story. Uh, the, one, one of the more interesting pieces in the, the transitioning of the forum was the transitioning of the group that managed the forum. They like to work in forums. They have admin forums, and they talk to each other on the forums, and they, they believe in forums. They do an incredible job. They have, um, what is it, something like 60,000 topics, 20,000 of them marked as um, uh, uh, Solve topics, uh, something you know like you know a hundred topics a day are updated, and uh, you know like twenty five of them I think solved a day. It's they they have an, an enormous amount of um, of traffic, and and they're they're constantly working on it. But they were not particularly interested even to move across to Apache. They had their forum, they liked their forum, they wanted to stay at their forum, forum.openoffice.org. And it was actually quite a task to move them into the open office community. And, and at this point, I guess what we have is we have kind of one rep representative uh, has a little picture of Hagar the, the horrible. And Hagar will show up on occasion on the mailing list and communicate things that they're discussing over on their side on the admin list. And there have been some. Uh, there, there, there's been some bit of, you know, early on we said, no, you guys have to do everything on a mailing list. And they said, no, we're not going to. And, and, and we're the forum community, and we're not even part of your community. And you know, we worked through that. And we finally, I think, have come to a reasonable uh, situation where they can go off and make decisions. And they can work in the world they like to work in. But then they report back, and we have a, a mechanism for communicating between these two kind of sub-communities. Um, the one other piece here. It was the, this whole issue of the licensing, which was fairly interesting. As we went in and looked at the, um, at the forums and the wiki site, we found that over a number of years, there were different uh, terms of use at the bottom. And there is a real question as to what all this content in the forum and the wiki, how, how it was licensed. And it, you know, uh, certainly from, from my side in terms of trying to transition this from owned by Oracle to owned by Apache, that was actually a fairly interesting problem because we had no idea who owned it. The forum guys certainly believed that they owned it, that it was, there wasn't necessarily any specific group, but they believed that the forum was owned by the forum and they were, they felt themselves to be their own entity and it was, uh, but 
how, how that worked in terms of a legal contract, I have no idea. Um, in the end, we actually transferred the hosting of the service over to Apache and ignored the license in question. We figured this content is content, and as we didn't actually give Apache a license to the content, we merely transitioned the hosting of these servers from Oracle to Apache, and we were actually able to kind of skirt this, and, but to some degree, even to this day, there is, there is some question as to exactly what license this is under and who owns it and which pieces are under what license and what agreement. Um, Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So. But, but I think that, that that's one of the things that, that uh, you know, license clarity here would actually in some ways be a good thing because then that would, that would open up areas where you can use the content. And so this, this lack of clarity is, is, is definitely a problem. Yeah, and in addition to that sort of implicit consent, though, on both the forum and the wiki, there were actually uh, terms of use. The problem is the terms of use changed over time, and there was no connection between any particular topic and which terms of use it was contributed under. So there was even, there was even addition on top of that, but the, and the terms of use were, yeah. Which you would like to choose if you wanted to. Yeah, so, it was, it, so that's... Yeah, that's my, my lack of clarity. Uh, so we'll, we'll review that later. So my next topic is documentation, which um, we have this group. Uh, I guess they're, they're, they're centered, or they're, they have a um, server or at least a, an organization down in Australia. And it's the, um, it's the yeah, Friends of Open Office, and it's the, what, what's the, uh, um, What's their current name? But it's, yeah. And, and, and so the documentation was all um, GPL licensed and written by, uh, you know, written by this group and, 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 and managed. And they, the, uh, they um, moved across, and, and a lot of them were then writing documentation for uh, LibreOffice. And, um, this group, they, early on, we had a lot of discussions with them, but they, in the end, I, I, I guess the best way to describe it is that community did not want to move to Apache, and the ownership of the copyright of any particular document was in question enough that they felt they had no way of relicensing the, doc, the, the documents to Apache. And so this was one where, in the end, I think we just kind of punted and these two communities split ways. You had a question? I think they were actually GPL. I think. Yeah. I don't think they were using Creative Commons. Right, and 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 so so the issue in this is it. It got created over time. There was a group of people who were focused on it. They gravitated toward the LibreOffice pro project in general, and they didn't. They didn't want to. They didn't want to change the way they were doing things. They were happy with what they were doing, and I, th I believe they've actually released documents for Apache Open Office. Yeah. And, and yeah, and so and so that that community, yeah, 
yeah, and so that, that community moves on on their own, but they, they move on separately than us. And I know, Rob, you've been, you've been dealing with the, um, the document group that's kind of growing, and there is some question as to, you know, do we create a whole new document set that, um, that, that's then under ALV2 and makes that more useful in terms of someone, you know, taking Apache and building a product downstream that this would allow the documentation to move along with that also, where at, at, at this point, um, that's just not a possibility. But I thought that this was an interesting thing to note. It's, it was, you know, a pretty major portion of the project in terms of the, you know, the volume of, of documentation and the importance. And, it, you know, it was something we, we never actually cracked. We, we couldn't crack this nut. We, we never actually were able to, to bring that piece of the community along. Um, no. Well, there was documentation from Sun and Oracle, but a lot of it was external and people who were just writing stuff. This, this, this is true, yeah. So, so the in-product help came across, has been relicensed, um, but this is, this is external books on user documentation on, on, on the product and how-to guides and so forth. But we didn't have the ability to fork it at Apache, right, because we can't go permissive to, uh, yeah, or copy left to permissive. So this next one is translation. Um, the in terms of tra transferring that, there was no actual, I guess it, at some point we did transfer the Poodle server so that um, we could continue uh, doing, doing translation through the Poodle server. Um, the interesting part is, by the time it came across, we've now created, or I guess Gavin created, a, uh, a Poodle server that's Apache-wide. And so this is one service where this was something that Apache didn't have and as it came across, it, it wasn't something where then we had another server in the infrastructure uh, environment that we were going to have to uh, control because it was non-standard Apache and, uh, you know, and, and we wanted something different. This was one where Apache said, oh, wow, that's interesting. And they've now created, I don't know, do you, it's, it's maybe 10 or so projects that are up there with us. Yeah. And so, so this is something where... The Apache infrastructure has now come and started to expand what, what Apache has to offer. Or, so the open office stuff has expanded what Apache has to offer. And I, I think that's a, a pretty interesting piece. One of the other interesting parts about translation is this, you know, reemergence of the community and, and the regrowth of the community. Point at Rob again. Um, I think this is one where there was a large portion of the translation community that went over to the LibreOffice community. And we had a series of languages, you know, something like 20 that came across that were the primary languages. And these additional languages looking for a translation community, um, I thought one of the most interesting things in the project was when Rob went in and, and just put up a, a, you know, a query on, on the website and said, hey, do you want to translate a language? And I, I think you, did you put it up for a couple of specific languages? We're looking for translations for these languages. And people show up. But yeah. We have native language websites for native languages. And so we had updated pages for the native language. And I just put up in English at the top of the page something that said, the information you see in this page is out of date because we have no more overall page of translators. If you'd like to learn more about it, talk to the translator, that's it. Send, send us a message on the, on the translation mailing list. And I believe it's, I mean, we're up to like 15 languages that are now being translated that weren't when, when we, we did our uh, you know, initial 3.4 release. And this is something that I believe is, is still growing. And there, there are a couple. So, so this, is, this, this, I would say, is actually you know, one, of, one of the success stories. And it's, it's one of the ways that, that um, we see the Apache Open Office is so much larger a community than just people hitting the, the base code. This is something where you bring somebody in who has you know, domain expertise 
but not necessarily in coding, just in translating to their own language. And then you can open up these just enormous communities to be able to use the product. I mean, one of, one of the languages we brought in was Hindi. And I mean, how, what is that? You know, you know billion people. Uh, you know, it's it's you know large number of users that we can then bring in. And so I think this is a you know this is an ongoing success story for the project. And it's and it's a way that we bring in new people to the pro project, but not necessarily ones that have to have expertise in coding C++. Um, throw up the slide. There are all sorts of areas that came across. You know, we, we have you know, QA, design, continuous in, uh, integration, our, our uh, build infrastructure. And they're all things that there was something built up before the transition and had to either come across or be rebuilt on the Apache side. Um, from the design standpoint, it's a, it's a fairly interesting one. You, you know, you yeah, ask, ask for designs, and you, you, you tend to get lots of people who are like, oh, I can come and redesign your website. Um, I, I, have, I have ideas how to redesign the look and feel of the product. Um, a lot of people who want to think about it, a little bit d d more difficult problem to actually um, find consistent consensus around a new design and a design direction. Um, the continuous integration was one I know I was involved with because I just wanted to have some way of building the, uh, the code while I was changing all the licenses to make sure I didn't break anything. But um, that was one where you know we went in and had an entirely different infrastructure than we had before, but built up an infrastructure under the, you know, kind of the Apache way and the, what, what Apache offered. Um, that's been a long, slow slog, but we are at the point where at least our Windows binaries are built by the um, by the the, uh, the build dots, and uh, yeah, we're we're still waiting for the uh, Mac and Red Hat build dots. Had to get that uh, two years, and we're still waiting for the uh, the Mac build dot. Um, the Open Office project had a large marketing presence. The people who were interested in marketing ended up being our, um, I have here our distributed local presence. So there were people in countries all over the world that would show up at shows in, in, in their region. And this was something that also I think has kind of started to be rebuilt. And you know we're still trying to figure out what this means. There, were, there was money to help people travel in the past. Running that through Apache has been a little bit different, but we've, you know, we, we've, we've, we've worked with this. I think it's something we can still um, work with. Uh, yeah, out, outreach, I put, I put FOSDEM. Uh, we send people to FOSDEM, they're like, well, we need swag. We need something to put on the table because everybody else has, has swag. How do we get swag? And, and so even figuring that out through what's, what's the new mechanism for doing this through Apache, and I think that, that's another one that we're still trying to figure out the transition and, and how, how does this work at Apache. Although we're, even that, you know, I think we figured out how to, how to um, support people who are, uh, you know, right, building up flyers. We still need to go in and, uh, you know, figure out how to have the, uh, the stuffed goals. And uh, I guess a goal holding a feather or something. Yeah, the, exactly. Um, yeah, and another one in this is this, this media interaction. Rob again. Uh, you know, we have a lot of a lot of people who we have we have a lot of contacts from people asking, um, you know, can we have somebody to talk to? Can we use, well, um, you know, can can we use uh, Apache Open Office and a particular, uh, um, you know, can we use your logos in our articles? Can we use your product in our um, videos? And so this, this is another one that uh, you know, we've been rebuilding, and I think is another community that's really important to us. OK, so I've yeah, I've run all the way down. I haven't even gotten to my lesson, sorry. Um, and this is, this, is, this is one of the ones that um, I expected to slam through that other stuff and then come and spend some time on this. But moving the community turned out to be a pretty difficult project. Um, a lot of people didn't want to move. We had to, you know, there's a new way of doing things. It's like, let's, let's learn the Apache way. Um, this, this idea of everything has to happen on the mailing list. 
you know, people were used to having, uh, you know, phone calls and stuff, and, and you know, other people wanted to be uh, interacting only on the forum, and, and I think that there were positives and negatives, but this, this was something that was, uh, there, was a, there was a learning curve here. Um, this idea of the cons uh, consensus decisions, and, you know, we had in the past this uh, um, hierarchical structure with, with leads for each of the different areas, and now suddenly it was just going to be kumbaya, one whole big group, and we'll run by consensus. Um, initially, I think it was difficult, and we, but we've now, I think, gotten to a point where this is running pretty smoothly. And, uh, you know, there's the whole, whole issue of getting along internally and externally. Um, you know, we've, I think it was rough at first, and now we've really gotten to a place where we're just running along smoothly. And, you know, whether it's our, you know, internal interaction or even, you know, this external interaction to, uh, um, you know, largely with the, the Libre project, I think we, we've really kind of grown and, and figured out how to go about dealing with this type of, type of issue. So, kind of wrapping up here, lessons learned. Um, this, uh, you know, the, the project is just much more than the code. And uh, the, especially with our project, with the way it's a consumer-oriented product, we are so much more than just the code that is the, the, pro, you know, the product, you know, the translations, the marketing, all the things I've just gone through you know, the, the forums and the support, it's, it's a very wide project, and so is the community, and I think it's really important to, to know and to think about going in. Um, the other piece is that this ownership and licensing of code is, is a really, really important uh, issue, and I, I think that if, if you're looking at a project starting up and looking to eventually move to Apache, uh, this, this is a, you know, like a cautionary tale. If you just throw your stuff up on GitHub and you're not really sure what the licensing is and who it is who's, who's, um, who, who's doing code pulls, it's, you can get into a situation where you can make your, project, your product be something that can't ever come to Apache because there's not a lack of clarity. And, and this, this one is not only on the code, it's on the web content, it's on all the content you have. And so I think when starting up a project, that's, I think it's, a, it's an actually fairly important thing to, to at least have some, some good mechanics in terms of how, you know, what, what the terms of use on the website are, what, you know, how you deal with code contributions. And, and there, this is the, the, where the documentation never came across. So this uh, user documentation, it, it's one of the things that hurt us. Um, in terms of the lessons used for the community, Right, the health of the community is everything, um, and that doesn't happen for free. And I think we we kind of learned as as a project that it's something that you can't you can't let things fester, and that when when you're having problems with the community, you can't just sit back and hide in the corner and hope things happen, and hope things fix themselves. You have to actively go in, and as a community, you have to go in and, and fix them, and. You know, I think one of the ones that we were really good at is this one that you have to be aware that, that you have multiple types of community. So for us, you know, we have this very narrow developer community, but then beyond that, we have this wider project community that's doing translation and marketing and, and design and all, all of these other things. And that, that, that's a, you know, it's a really important part of our community. But even wider than that, we have this, you know, tens of millions you know, possibly hundreds of millions of users worldwide, and that's also part of our community. And I think that it's important to, to both understand that and to, to use that. It's that, that wider user community that's going to build into the project community that's going to build into the, the dev community. Growing this community requires effort. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like be welcoming the path Providing people a path in is really important. The, the modules that we, I guess you, you wrote most of those, Rob, right? Um, we have modules that say this is how to, to, to start to look at, at, at contributing to the project. And we have these modules about here's the Apache way. Here's how to go and, and pull the source code and, and compile the source code. Here's how you might um, contribute to translation. And so we have these modules that people can go in and, uh, and learn about how to contribute to the project. And then this, this whole point of just ask for help. Um, 
when, the, when, you, when you go in and ask for help, <laughs> people show up out of the woodworks. And we have, you know, with the, with the, the size of our, uh, um, our uh, web presence, we have a really wide reach, and so we can get a lot of help. And then my final piece on, on lessons learned is um, with, with Apache. Um, really, really, it, you know, when you're looking to get the most out of Apache, it's, I, I think it's as uh, dealing with any new technology or in, any new organization. It's like we need to be open to new ways and look to potentially use the Apache way of doing things instead of our old way of doing things. And you need to pick and choose between the two, but oftentimes, hey, there's a reason why they do things a certain way, and you should know what that is and you know, find out which is, which is the better way of doing things. And, and oftentimes, so being open to trying new ways. Uh, I think we've had this, this use of the standard infrastructure at Apache. Everywhere where we're using standard infrastructure, it r runs just incredibly smoothly. The places where we you know, kind of have our own custom stuff, it's, it's an ongoing issue of concern. And, um, and then that, that, that last point there, you know, embrace the duocracy. If you want something done, roll up your sleeves and do it. Apache's really, really um, good in terms of that. Uh, when you ask questions, you get lots of answers, and, and the Apache community is just really, really welcoming in that. But when you ask a question, you often get multiple conflicting answers. Um, but you can work through it, and, and I, I, I think we, you know, that's, that's been something that um, you know, we've actually been able to give back, because now sometimes when I, I see uh, questions coming in, uh, we'll have an open office person you know, talking to the next set of projects and saying, oh, hey, we, we ran into that one too, and here's how we, how we got through it. And so I think that there's a, that, you know, it's a really healthy part of the whole Apache, uh, um, you know, the, the whole Apache community. And then, you know, that, that last point there, it's like, if you show you know how to drive, they'll give you the keys. And so if, if you jump in and you say, hey, I want to help with this, I want to do this for our project, how do I go about doing it? People will lead you along, and if you are, are there and you, you know, you're, you're showing that you're, uh, you're interested, you know, you, you can get help and they'll let you do it. And that's pretty much what I have discussed. Do you have any questions? Sure. Um, so, okay, from the Oracle side, <laughs> you're looking at the team, uh, but there was, there were, uh, oh, I mean, there, there were at least 10, maybe 20 people who were pretty involved in the wider uh, pro process, and so a lot of people, um, you know, there was the throw and the catch, and, and the throw was mostly me, but the catch was a lot of people who were helping put this all together. So, yeah, yes, and uh, yeah, yes, yes. So, a uh, hundred plus. There were hundred plus people working on it. So, at Oracle, and it's on, yeah, before it. So, no. At, at, the, at this point, Oracle has kind of like stepped away to a large degree. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean the long and the short of it is it, it's a product that really didn't fit into Oracle and, and, and Oracle structure. Um, Oracle, to a large degree, is a server company, and we sell stuff that goes in the data center, and here you had this extremely large um, consumer product, and the, the whole model for selling it and everything was, was just not particularly close to you know, the Oracle way of doing things. And so it's that at a certain point, we looked at it and said, that's not really where we want to be. At the same time, you don't want it to go away. And so there, there, was, a, there was a large push to make sure that, that you know, it, we didn't just, you know, bury it. It's like how, you know, how do you, how do you make, let this go on? And then there was, that was the whole, yeah. Yeah, what I find is interesting is, I mean, this is a product that we built from kind of, like, corporate directive and support. Like, basically, how many projects I can't do that never have the opportunity to work with. And I think part of it is, 
So, so this idea, yeah, living will for this open source project, but that's the open source license. And I, and I think one of the things that I've been going through here is that you quickly find out that it's not just the license for the code, it's all of these things. And so making sure all of that is under an appropriate license is the thing that then allows you to move. Absolutely. Absolutely. And understanding, you know, you know, I don't know how much this applies to more server-oriented projects. But certainly with this, which is this consumer-oriented project with this vast reach, these other pieces turn out to be as important or even more important. The translations, the documentation, the, the, um, the support, the, the, the wiki and forum. And so I, I think, yeah, that, that the, the need for clarity in the licensing and ownership of those pieces becomes you know, really important when you, when you look to transfer it. Open office. Yeah. Nope. And, and, and the reason was is because the group that, and we're, we're, so online help, yes, is. But the, there was documentation like user manuals and, and, and how-to guides that were created by a group that was an autonomous group in the old openoffice.org community. And we, we were never able to bring them across and there was not enough clarity in terms of ownership of the copyright of any particular piece that would allow us to um, do a relicensing of the code. And so that's one piece where that community just kind of didn't come across. Right. Ab ab absolutely. But, but I think that it's, it, in this, this issue of the tran transition, the reason why that's been necessary is because we were never able to pull this Right. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So. We'll call it a day. Thank you all.